Hi guys, this is Victor from easycodinglab.com. Today I bring you another awesome video. I'm going to take you through how to test your REST API using Postman. If you're ready for this tutorial, just stay tuned. In my last video i showed you how you can test your soap api using soap ui and the feedback i had after that video was great and i promised i was going to make a video on how to test your rest api using postman and i'm here today to deliver on my promise imagine you are traveling on a road that you're not familiar with it's going to take you a longer time to get to your destination because you do not know where the potholes are or you don't know where the caves are so you're going to be very cautious you're going to drive slow compared to a road that you are very familiar with that you go full speed knowing exactly where potholes are knowing exactly where caves are and you get to your destination in no time this scenario can be likened to testing your applications as a developer application testing is a key testing is very very key in development so it is also equally important to test your apis or to test your web services before you zoom into your integration as i did uh, in my last video in my uh, tutorial on how to test your SOAP web services using SOAP UI. I'm going to follow a similar approach to show you how you can test your REST API using Postman. So without much I do, if you're ready, just, just zoom into it. If you don't have uh, Postman installed on your machine, you can go to Google and then search for Postman and then download. So you go to Google and then type download Postman. So you click on the first link that shows up that is post postman google web store so this will install the chrome extension of postman for you which you can also use you can use you can use to test your api they also have a windows version but the chrome extension i think works fine because I have installed Postman already, that's why you see launch app over here. But if you haven't installed Postman, you see something I see like get application or something over here. That when you click, it will begin with it will begin the installation wizard on how to install Postman. So just do that and then install Postman, and you'll be ready to go. All right, so let me start my Postman and let's start with our tests. Wait for us to start. Okay. Start. Now our postman is up. So I have uh, my endpoints and then my request sample message over here that I'm going to use for this test. This, the API that I'm going to use for this tutorial is developed by me and it's on my machine. It's an API that I developed that it's used by applications it, applications consume this api by passing email parameters into this api and this api sends the email on behalf of those applications so i'm going to use this api for this demonstration so we're going to test two different methods first i'm going to show you how you can do a post you can use the post method to post to an api and then you can um, then the next uh, step I'm going to show you how you can use the get method to retrieve from the API so like I said I'm going to use the API resource which is on my local host to do this demonstration and if you have any API in mind you can also use that same API and then follow the same steps that I'm going to show you and it's going to work fine for you so first I'm going to copy the endpoint to the to my api 
So you copy, I copy my endpoint and then I paste it here where it says enter request URL. I paste my endpoint over here and then I go ahead and change my method. I'm not using the get method, I'm going to use the post method. So I change my method from here to post. From here, I set up the authorization if any authorization requires. You have to find out from your provider whether the API requires any authorization. And if it does, what type of authorization does your API requires? So for instance, if your API requires the basic authorization, under the type, you come here and then you select basic auth. You enter your username, you enter your password, and that should be it. With the API that I'm using for the test, it doesn't require authorization in the authorization sec uh, section, but then you put the authorization in the headers. That, that's how other APIs also choose to do the authentication. You put in an authentication code in the header, and that's how this API of mine works. So I'm going to copy my authentication code from here. So the authentication code requires a key and a value pair. So the key is auth code. And then I when copy the value, then I paste the value over here. So this is what is going to be used to authenticate me at the API section. So when you're done with the authentication section bit, and then you move on to the body section. Under the body section, this is where you're going to either type in or copy and paste the JSON object or the JSON request that you're going to send to the API. But before you do that, you need to select raw. Raw gives you a text box where you type or you paste in your JSON uh, request. So I'm going to go ahead and then copy the JSON request that I'm going to use for this demonstration. So go ahead, copy, then I come and paste it in here. So once I have this done, I now move to the text section. The text section is where you specify what type of requests you send in. So this is a JSON request. So I go ahead and then select JSON under the text. At this point, everything is set and I'm ready to shoot to receive a response from the API. To trigger the API, what you do is to come here and then click on the send over here. So I go ahead and click on send, wait for my response and here's my response, success. So it means that my details, this detail has been posted to the API and has been saved in the in the in the api and what it returns it's a success message which indicates that everything is successful so that's how you do a post test so for instance if i'm going to consume this api and i'm done with this test now i'm sure this sample request works so i can just copy this sample request into my code and then change this static values and make them dynamic because I know this sample works and this endpoint also works and the response that is returned is exactly what I, what, what I want. So I can then go ahead and then program this. All right, so let's jump to the second section of it where I'm going to show you how you can use a get to retrieve the data that we just posted. So what we're going to do is to use a get method to retrieve this data that we've posted to the API. So you're going to retrieve it. So let me open a new tab over here and then go and copy my endpoints to the get method. Copy my endpoint. Then I paste it over here. Again, if it requires any authorization, you go ahead and then you do you do your authorization. But as I said, with mine, the authorization is done within the header. So I go ahead and then repeat, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> sorry. I go ahead and then repeat what I did over here. Go ahead and copy my authentication code. Paste it over here. With the guest method, you need not to put anything in the body because the guest is not a post. 
so it doesn't require a, a body a body structure it does require a body all that you need is the endpoint and then you specify your authentication if 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 the need be so after after doing all this we're ready to go so we again click on the send button over here to retrieve our request so i go ahead and click on send and then I have my response actually i was supposed to have it's supposed to display just one response but then i've used this same account to post one earlier on before doing this video so that's how come retrieving um, it retrieves everything that i've posted that's why you see two responses over here so then this doesn't mean that our, our test isn't right our test is actually right because if we went to consume this particular api and it's supposed to retrieve all messages that we've passed to the api then receiving this response means that our api is ready our api is working and then we can just go ahead and then zoom into our integration and then start consuming the api i hope this tutorial has been helpful although it was very short it's very very necessary you test all your apis before you go ahead and then you start with your coding or you go ahead and then you start with your integration it saves you a lot of integration time i urge you to practice this and then make this part and parcel of you test before you zoom into coding if you have any question if you have any clarification don't hesitate to connect with me at victor at easycodinglab.com i hope this video has been has been very helpful and it has been very valuable to you if you like this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up and then subscribe to my channel i'll thank you for watching